Yes, so it works. Wow. Yeah. 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 I, I can see that that, that was so over 100 years old. Yeah, it's, it's over 100 years old. Right. Whoever, with the flapper brushes and everything. <laughs> I guess. Okay, we'll go ahead and pray and get started. Lord, thank you for this day and this time. Thank you for you. Thank you that you are with us, you prepare us for what is to come, and that you guide us through, Lord. Thank you. Please be with all those that are sick, hurt, suffering, need your help, I think especially for the deaf and dolls. Please be with them and help them, Lord. Thank you. Amen. So, we're going to talk about a missionary called Stanley Dale. Who? Stanley Dale. I don't have a single quote from the guy because he was so well known. He was well known, but he didn't write anything. So, I have no idea what he said, but, but we know a little bit about him. So, uh, Stanley Dale uh, was to a uh, was to a tribe in uh, Papua. It's right next to Papua New Guinea. And uh, it was all kind of one area back then. And the western part was very wild. Lots of hills, mountains, valleys. Um, and uh, and they was well known for its sharp, jagged rocks and, and cliffs. And, you know, rocks that would like cut you open and, Lots of alligators and mosquitoes and malaria and snakes and big bugs and it was just not a friendly place. Uh, the first people to that area, there was an oil company that was looking, trying to find new places to grow oil. So they flew a plane over that area and were looking and they saw this mountain valley with a with a lake and they saw tribal tribal huts all around it. That was when they realized there were people out in the middle of nowhere. Well, of course, but you know, but they so they started. Of course, the first people there were explorers. You know, oh, a place no you know intelligent person has ever been. Of course, these people are intelligent. They they know all about their place where they live and how to survive and everything else. But that was the way us Westerners thought. Of. So they went just trying to get to this to these high reach places. And most of them died. Uh, most of them died. Some of them from tribal people, but most died of sickness and illness before they ever made it. So uh, this whole area, it was from the from the 30s is kind of when they kind of discovered it. And uh, so it was well just before the Great Depression. So I think it died in the 20s, and then it. People started going there and slowly but surely. And when the Christian community found out that there were people there, they said, We got to go there and bring Christ. If there's people there, we got to be there. And uh, one of the people that, uh, that went was Stanley Dale. He was one of many. This, this area had a lot of missionaries go to this area. And so the area was very tough. I mean, the, the the area itself was very tough, but the people were no better. I mean, they they were tribal people. Uh, we remember like Jim Elliott and his group that went to the Akas, and they were they were uh, you know cannibals. They were headhunters. They were you know, and they killed them. Well, this is the same kind of group. The same kind of people. Different area, of course, but same same people. They were they were they were cannibals. They they were very, very tough people. And uh, so Stanley Dale was called to a tribe called the Yali, the, the Yali tribe. They were, bar none, one of the hardest tribes that was there. They were the most ruthless, the most warrior tribe that was there and uh, was well known throughout the area. Well, Stanley Dale was a guy that God prepared him beforehand. Uh, he had prepared different people. We see where he prepared David to go out, uh, to go and be king. He, he, he prepared him to fight Goliath. I mean, what he's saying, 
you know, uh, bears came and and wolves or, or I mean lions and stuff like that. They came and and God led me and I took care of them. You know, I I drove them away by God's grace. I I I I, uh, I killed them and drove them away and bears and stuff like that. Well, God had prepared him for what was to come. God had prepared David. Well, like David, he had been prepared even before he was a Christian. He was a tough individual because he was very short, a very short individual, so he had to be tough. And he learned to be a very tough individual. And then at the age of 18, God came and changed his life around and then just completely changed him. Uh, we'll go to Isaiah 52. Isaiah 52, 6. Therefore, my people shall know my name. Therefore, they shall know in that day that I am he that does speak. Behold, it is I. How beautiful upon the mountain are the feet of him, are the feet of him that bring good tidings, that publish, that, uh, publish peace, peace and bring good tidings of, of good, that publish uh, salvation and saith unto Zion, thy God reigns. Thy watchmen shall lift up thy vo the voice of the voice together. They shall sing, for they shall see eye to eye when the Lord shall bring again Zion. So how beautiful, uh, how beautiful upon the mountain are the feet of him that brings good tidings, or, you know, good news. So how beautiful, that's how God looks at those who go forth and bring the good news to people. And it's no different in, in, in Christianity, no different in New Testament covenant, that it's, it's just no different. God sees those who he sends out who go bring good, the good news. He sees that they are beautiful in his eyes. Uh, Matthew 7. Matthew 7, verse 12. Matthew 7, 12. Therefore, all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leads unto life, and few there be that find it. So we're sent out to do that, to do to others as we would have others do to us. We want to, we, we, we desire Christ. We, we desire people to, to show us the right way. If we're lost, we want to know the right way to go to get to where we need to go. We don't want to continue wandering around town. I mean, some people are so stubborn that they don't want to, they don't want to be pointed the way. They don't want to ask for help. They just want to wander around for hours on end until they finally figure it out. But, but, but most people want to be pointed in the right direction. Well, we want to help others to know the way to Christ, to know the way of salvation, and to know the way of life. And it's a warning that, that the way is narrow, that it's a broad, easy way, that's obviously not the right way to go, that the, the way is narrow, that, that it is straight, and uh, narrow, it gives you an idea in the way it's, and what it means is that it's a way of squeezing, a way of difficulty, a way of danger, 
It doesn't give you an, the idea that it's going to be easy, but that's the way that leads to life. That's the way that leads to God. And it's not an easy way that we have to go on because God gives us everything we need for Amen. salvation. Well, Stanley Dale had been built, and many of the missionaries had been built ahead of time. Um, we look at C.T. Studd, and he he had he went to uh, interior China, and was with uh, was with the missionaries and stuff there. And they were called, you know, who wants to go to a place? They were in a group, uh, and they were asked, you know, who is willing to go to a place? Where you will likely not come back alive and all seven of them raised up their hand and said well, we'll go we'll go and he was part of that group that went he went to interior china and suffered greatly from it but brought the gospel went to interior india and that was no better suffered came back i think he was like around the age of 54 sitting there lying in his bed thinking he was going to die had all manner of diseases that had completely racked his body. And, but he, uh, he had, there was a, uh, uh, there was a missionary that came back telling about the need for people in interior Africa. And he looked and he said, God, don't, don't send a young man, send me. And so he went to Africa and he was a perfect person because anybody, any white man who went to interior Africa was struck by diseases. Within a few weeks, they were dead. Uh, it was just, it was just the way it was. There were so many diseases and stuff, but he was prepared ahead of time for that calling. He had all those diseases before they even gone. He, his body already knew how to fight them. He spent, he spent something like 20 years in an area that people died in. Lots, several missionaries went to the same area. He wasn't the only one, but uh, he spent a long time bringing the gospel to that area, um, enough to where there was, uh, in, in that area, there's a, there's a line, it's called the blood line, I think is what it's called. And it's where Islam was spreading south, was spreading from the north to the south, and the missionaries said no more. And along that line, that tons and tons of missionaries died, and and Islam came to that line, and it stopped. It, it stopped, and it didn't go any further, at least at that moment. So it hasn't yet that I know of, but you know, it, it could eventually. It's up to God. Well, like with C.T. Studd, this, uh, Stanley Dale was, he was built for the calling. He was built tough, and uh, the Yali were a tough group. They taught their kids from the time they were young not to flinch at danger. They would stand the boys up against up against a wall and they would throw a spear at them, but it wouldn't be at them. It would like hit right next to their head. And if they flinched, then they would be corrected and made to stand back up. And they were taught not to flinch at danger, not to flinch. They were a group of, of warriors. Well, God had used many different people to go to really rough areas in the past. There's a woman named Jackie Bullinger. So she was a missionary in Hong Kong. She went to a neighborhood in Hong Kong that even the police wouldn't go. It was so bad and so dangerous that even the police wouldn't go there. But yet she was in that area. She was living in a house, bringing uh, women into her house who were coming down off drugs, giving them a safe place to go to come down off these drugs. She came back to the United States and she looked and, and uh, she saw all the people in their warm house and in their warm ways and she said, you know, you may have everything, you may have all that you have in life, but I have the grace of God. She recognized there was something more, there was something she had that they didn't. Well, with Stanley Dale, he was, he was prepared beforehand um, we'll go to 2 Corinthians 9. Second Corinthians 9 and 6. But 
But this I say, which, which uh, he which sows sparingly shall reap also sparingly. He which shows, sows bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as his pur purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. God is able to make to make all grace abound towards you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things may abound through every good work. So it's a it's a promise that you give to God bountifully. If you give to him bountifully, he will give to you bountifully. Now it's not always going to be money and stuff like that, but he will give bountifully. He will he will give you grace for the work he sends. He will give you grace for every good work in all sufficiency. It's a it's a great promise. And well, the missionaries have have seen that that's they hold God to his to his promises. If God calls them to an area. They go out, and that was the way old time missions was. You know, they would go. They might have looking for somebody to you know help them to succeed. But if God called them to an area, they went. And uh, and there were times, there were all kinds of, CT stud was only one of a few, but there were some, they said, no, you, we're not gonna send you out. We're not gonna, we're not gonna send you out. You're just not, you're, you're not, you're not, you're not somebody who can go out and survive. Well, they went anyway, and God supplied their needs to go to where they were needed to go. Gladys Aylward is another one, a woman who went to China. And so she was supplied the need. They said, no, we won't send you. Uh, you're not somebody who can survive in these areas. Well, she went and survived. She led children out of the area where they were and led them to safety during war times. She was somebody who God sent and prepared for that, for that way. Uh, we'll go to Romans 12. Romans 12, verse, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and the and perfect will of God. So you have uh, Stanley Dale had gone to this area. Him, they went to these people, and there was also a guy named Phil Masters, and there was another guy I can't remember the name of, but they went to this area and they learned, they, they were with the Yahweh people, and uh, the tale when they first came to meet them was kind of an interesting tale. Um, they had come, they were going through an area and were at, uh, like, a, I think it was a ravine, and they were looking across the ravine, and on the on that on the other side of the river, there was a uh, there was a tribal people, and they looked down and they saw this white man standing over over there. And they called them Duongs, uh, uh, and uh, that means long nosed white people. I guess that's how they saw them. So they saw them and they thought that this person was sent to these people to help them defeat us. That, that was what they, that was how they saw things. And so they were warning him, they would draw through their bow back, don't, do not cross, do not, do not cross, do not go any further. And he looked over and said, and he looked over and said, uh, and he called their bluff. He went and called their bluff and said, no, I, I turned at the age of 18, I'm not turning back. Uh, at the age of 18, I came to Christ and I'm not turning back. And he went down, there was a, a suspension bridge that went across the valley, and he went through uh, the river. He, he, it looked like it was, it was shallow enough, so he walked through the river and had a rough time of it, had to look down and find his footing and everything. And he stood there on the other side of the valley. He, he looked up and they still had their bows bent. He said, I'm, 
I'm not going back. And they said, I, I'm not turning back. And he kept going. They stood there just completely dumbfounded. Because to them, he's down in the valley. He's perfect pickings. You don't, you don't, you don't uh, try to assail the, uh, you know, the high ground. He was down in the valley coming up to them. At that point, they thought, you know, he must have been called here for something else. So they went ahead and let him cross and didn't shoot at him. And so he came to that people and they learned their language. They translated the book of Matthew and along with several other Christian writers and stuff. And uh, uh, we'll go to Matthew 28. Matthew 28, verse 18. And Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So. You have, uh, he, they knew this, this promise. They knew that God was with them and that they were to go give the gospel to all people. Well, they went, they gave the gospel to them and the, and, uh, the tribe was, was the, the, what they were telling them was something completely foreign. They had people come into the land and smash their idols and stuff. And so it was completely foreign to them. I guess one of the Yali tribe they must have been a couple of different ones, I'm not sure. But uh, they had actually shot him at one point with an arrow, and he didn't die. He just pulled it out, broke it over his knee, and just kept going. He was, he was healed. And uh, so finally, they, had, uh, they were scared. They were scared of, his, of the message he was bringing. They were scared of what they were seeing. They thought of him as like a god. And so they came after him and were shooting arrows, and he kept pulling them out and breaking them over his knee. When they found him, when they finally found, when they found his body, he had 60 arrows broken, uh, broken all around him, and he was stuck. He was stuck with a total of like 100 arrows uh, in order to bring him down. And they took his body and chopped it all up because they were afraid he might be resurrected, that he might that he might rise again. There was another guy named Phil Masters that was found with him at that time, and I guess some of the tell tales of the Yali later on were that they were singing, pray, they were singing and praying and praising God at the time when they were shot. Don't really know because nobody was there. That was what the, that was what the Yali said afterwards. And so you have this uh, this this thing. It ended in such in such horror. It ended with uh, it seems like such a such a such a horrible way, but God was preparing the Yali for what was to come. And uh, that's a another tale that we'll have to wait for another time because there just is too much, too much to tell. But he was he was preparing them and they were they 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 saw that he was something different. He was an individual that was built like them. He was tough. He wasn't gonna back down. He wasn't gonna flinch from danger. The way they saw it was the first one that flinched was the one who was going to die. He wasn't, he wasn't running, he wasn't backing down, and he was the perfect man to, to go and bring the gospel to, to them at that time. So, so that's it for now. So, Lord, thank you for this uh, reminder of, that you are with us, Lord, that although life is, not, is guaranteed not to be easy, it's guaranteed to be difficult, but that your way leads to life and that we are called to be those people to bring, uh, bring the good news to those around us. We don't have to go to some foreign nation to have opposition to your word. We don't have to go to these places across the world. We are Christians wherever we are, wherever we go. So please. Help us, Lord, and guide us. Give us the strength for what we can do. Give us wisdom for what to do and what's right. Please be with, be with us, Lord, and guide us.
Thank you, Lord, for your good grace. Amen. <clears throat> Yeah.